Uh, I should mention one other thing here. Uh, something I really em emphasized in the introduction to this series of videos was that it was crucial to get the charges right when you're drawing uh, the electron pushing arrows. It's crucial to think about how the charges are changing. Uh, and that's right. Uh, however, um, right now, uh, at, at this point in the videos, I'm not going to be thinking about the charges. So you might have noticed that I haven't drawn any charges on any of these atoms, even though the atoms would be changing their charges as part of the reaction. Even though the, the atoms would be changing their charges as part of the reaction. I actually haven't, I haven't drawn the charges here. Uh, in this part of the videos, I just want to focus on how to know which uh, what, what's happening to the lone pairs and the bonds. Right now, I just want to focus on how do you figure out what's happening to the lone pairs and the bonds. We're not going to focus on how the charges are changing, for the most part. Uh, that's very important, but we'll get to that later. So for right now, let's not worry about the charges. Let's just focus on the lone pairs and the bonds. Um, also, uh, it occurs to me that uh, I, I should clarify some terminology that I've been using. I've already started talking about the head of the arrows and the... Uh, tail of the arrows. Uh, and those are terms I'm going to be using a lot in this series of videos. So let's just make it clear what the head and the tail are. So please label the tail of this arrow. Well, I hope you can see that this is the end that we would consider the tail of the arrow. And what would be the head of the arrow? Well, it's clear, I hope, that this is the head of that electron pushing arrow. Um, so uh, please make a note if you need to that whenever I refer to the head or the tail of an arrow, this is the tail and this is uh, the head. Uh, ma make sure that that's very clear in your mind because those are terms I'm going to be using over and over and over in this series uh, of videos. It's always very important to ask yourself, where is the tail of the arrow and where's the head? Uh, oftentimes people um, can get confused in the middle of the problem and, and somehow they start thinking of the head as this end and the tail as this end, which obviously is wrong. Um, so make sure um, that you pause for a second and think about this for a while so that you can be clear in your mind that this is the end of the arrow that's the tail and this is the end of the arrow that's the head. Like I said, I'm going to be using those, tail, uh, I'm going to be using those terms uh, repeatedly in these videos. Okay, um, go ahead and try drawing the products uh, here. Pause the video and uh, draw the products uh, if you can. All right, now, um, how's this arrow different from what we had before? Well, the difference is that in the previous picture, the tail of the arrow was on this lone pair, whereas in this picture, the tail of the arrow is on uh, the negative charge. So we have to know what's the difference between having the tail on a lone pair and the tail on a negative charge. And the answer is there really isn't any important difference. The convention in organic chemistry is that if you put the tail of an arrow on a negative charge, that really means that the electrons are coming from a lone pair. If you see the tail of an arrow on a negative charge, that really means that the electrons are coming from a lone pair. Um, so the, in this case, the tail of the arrow really is on a lone pair, even though we haven't drawn that lone pair. Uh, it's conventional in many cases in organic chemistry not to draw lone pairs oftentimes. So um, in this case, the tail really is on the lone pair. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that lone pair in. Again, usually in organic chemistry, we, we wouldn't draw the lone pair in in this situation, but uh, I'm going to do that to, to clarify what's happening. Okay, and where are the electrons coming from? Uh, well, the electrons are um, obviously coming from this lone pair, so the lone pair doesn't exist anymore. And where are the electrons going to? Well, just as before, the electrons are going to a bond between the X and the Y. We know they can't be just jumping into a lone pair on the Y because you can't make a lone pair to lone pair transition. That would be too big of a jump. That would go from the, the Y lacking the electrons to completely owning them. That's not allowed. Okay, uh, I said I wasn't going to focus too much on, on, the char uh, on charges at, at this point in the series of videos, so I won't worry about what the charges are in this picture. Uh, obviously, you'd have to put some charges in on this picture, too, but I'm not, I'm not going to worry about what those charges would be right now. Um, but I did want to mention that if you see the tail of an arrow on a uh, negative charge, that really just means the electrons are coming from a lone pair again. So these pictures are pretty much equivalent. Uh, again, uh, th there would be some charges in this picture over here. I'm just not going to draw those right now. I don't want to focus on charges right now. So don't worry about the charges. Let's just focus on the idea that when the tail of the arrow is on a negative charge, that really means the electrons are coming from a lone pair.
Okay, so we can see that this is really just another example of a lone pair to sigma bond transition. Um, so when the electrons are coming from a lone pair, that can be indicated either by the tail being on the lone pair or maybe by the tail being on a negative charge that represents a lone pair. Um, what's being suggested by this uh, electron pushing arrow? What's happening here? That was actually a, a trick question. Um, this arrow is meaningless so far. And the reason that it's meaningless is that the tail of the arrow is pointing directly at the atom. Uh, and the convention in organic chemistry is that the tail of an arrow should never be pointing directly at an atom. You should never have the tail of an arrow coming directly from the atom. Um, so this is simply a bad, wrong electron pushing arrow. So this is just bad and wrong. It doesn't really have a meaning. So you should never draw an electron pushing arrow that looks like this. This would be bad and wrong. Now, what, what did the person who wrote this probably want it to mean? Well, they probably wanted it to mean that uh, the X was donating its lone pair. So how could they have drawn this correctly? Uh, well, the correct way to draw it would be like this. Um, if you want the electrons to come from a lone pair, you actually have to draw the lone pair in. Uh, again, I mentioned that in many cases in organic chemistry, we don't draw lone pairs. But if the tail of the arrow is uh, coming from a lone pair, then you really do have to draw the lone pair in. The only exception to that is if uh, the atom has a negative charge. If the atom has a negative charge, um, then you could put the tail on the negative charge because that kind of represents the lone pair. Um, so either of these would be a, a reasonable pattern. One thing you can't do, though, is just have the tail of the arrow directly at the atom. That's just wrong. Uh, all right, so again, um, to uh, repeat, if, electrons are, uh, if uh, the electrons are coming from a lone pair, you either have to draw the lone pair in, or you could have the tail of the arrow uh, coming from a negative charge that represents the lone pair, but you can never have the tail of an arrow coming directly from an atom. That's just not the conventional way to draw arrows in organic chemistry. So I'm going to erase this example because it's wrong. These are the two uh, allowable patterns.